Okay, so let's see what we have here. If we put our test point on here, which is gonna be eight times, sorry, not our test point, but our point that splits up this number line. Now we wanna find something smaller and bigger than this. So what's a good number that's smaller? One. Yeah, one, that's a good choice. And then, well, finding a good number that's bigger is a little bit tricky because well, what is that? Well, we can look at it like this. The cube root of two is definitely less than two, right? Eight times two is 16. So this whole thing is definitely less than 16. So now we can plug in. We wanna find the sine of the derivative in both of these cases, or the second derivative in both of these cases. So if we plug one into the second derivative, let's just eyeball it. Is that gonna be positive or negative? So plugging one in, you get two minus one over 16. So that's gonna be positive, right? Because you're taking two and you're subtracting a 16th. Well, 16th is a lot less than one, right? So this is positive, which means here, sorry, you have something that's concave up. So remember that was our general shape for something that's concave up. And then if you plug 16 in there, well, I'll let you do the numbers, but what you'll see is that this is concave down. You get a negative second derivative. So that allows us to really like put a nail in this, finish it all off. And what we have is that this thing is a concave up on the interval from zero to eight times the cube root of two. And then it's concave down on the interval eight times the cube root of two to infinity. 